The, uh, the duple and triple clave exercise, which I have recorded, is a, a, a very, very important aspect of uh, Afro-Cuban music. Um, when you listen to this music and when you perform this music, um, you, you're going to notice that um, there's a great deal of uh, motion between a duple feel and a triple feel. And if you listen to the recorded example, basically what I was doing was uh, try and concentrate on the sound of the clave. And you're going to notice in the first four bars, the clave is duple. And I'm playing duple rhythms in my left hand that are either in conjunction with or around the clave so you can hear the subdivisions. This is a very important thing. Then you'll notice in the next four measures that I go into a triplet feel. Okay, now the clave is still 2-3, but now the rhythms in the second half of the exercise are rounder, and they're rounder. We're thinking in triplets. So if the first half we were doing da 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 second half now ba ka do ga 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 da 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 ga 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 Okay, so and when you listen to this, these exercises, sometimes um, if you uh, to to um, I would like to pose a similarity to the great Elvin Jones. Elvin Jones had a style of playing that would, was uh, constantly going in and out of duple and triple. And it wouldn't necessarily be on a tune that was uh, an Afro-Cuban tune. It would be a straight-ahead swinging tune. And um, th this, this style of playing, even if you uh, don't ever get the opportunity to play Afro-Cuban music, we need to be able to have a complete command of being able to go in and out of duple and triple rhythms. The, the main issue that most of us would deal with is whether or not the big beat is affected by this and the big beat needs to stay very very strong and very very steady when we're playing this and then once we can start getting involved in this kind of playing then we can put different kinds of inflection into the groove which is sort of like a tension and release type thing and again listening to African drumming and Bata drumming, Conga drumming you're going to hear this type of stuff all of the time and, and it just adds a certain flavor and character to the music that is, um, is, is so important and um, so, so crucial to uh, being able to create a feel that has authenticity to it. So again, just to take, take a moment to absorb the way that the phrasing happens in that particular exercise. And if you wish, just do four bars of just straight eighth notes with the clave and then convert to playing maybe triplets in your left hand while you're playing the clave to make sure that they line up because, it don't, you know, the triplet, I mean, the, the clave pattern is in sync with what's happening over here. It's not uh, playing duples and triples and triples and duples. It's like the clave is reflecting the vibe of the rhythmic subdivision, and this is a very important thing to internalize.
In this particular example, what I wanted to show was the left hand is playing the first two partials of the triplet for two bars, and then we went into a straight duple feel that's in conjunction with the triple feel of the 12-8 the, uh, bell pattern. Um, the first time I played it, it started on the beat, and then the second time we played the second and third partial in the left hand, and then we moved the eighth note pattern one sixteenth note off the beat, which is kind of a tricky thing to play, but both of these are extremely idiomatic in terms of 12-8 um, uh, uh, Afro-Cuban hand drumming. These um, You will constantly hear um, triple and duple going in and out of these rhythms, and uh, the challenge that we have when we're playing a triplet-based pattern with the right hand is making sure that these duples are in time. So you're basically playing um, a couple of different pieces of the triplet, whether it's the first and third note, or the second and third note, or just the second note, and being able to make sure that we can keep that, that duple um, in time and still swinging with that pattern. So um, please, you know, listen to it a few times and really get it in your ear. And then once you get that, then you can go ahead and just try um, orchestrating some of these duple patterns and, um, and, and see how they sound in conjunction with the triplets because that's really when we get the authentic feel is when we're able to move in and out of these rhythms and, and the time remains very constant and very swinging. Another important aspect of this particular example when we were talking about the duple and triple clave is that this type of uh, interaction between duple and triple ha happens in all styles of music. This could happen in classical music, it could happen in rock, it could happen in rap, it could happen in jazz, pop, funk, and any style of music. And this is not something that is just solely designed for people that want to listen to Afro-Cuban music. This, this concept is, is used in so many different settings and uh, even from a, a standpoint where we weren't even talking about the style of music, it's a, an absolute must for anyone who wants to have a strong rhythmic command. And the strong rhythmic command will allow you to, um, to have the versatility to, to use this information where you think that it needs to be needed. And um, you can play it with conviction and um, you can play it in time and you can get the right feel within the piece and not have to worry about the, the, the beat moving. The beat has to stay very solid and that's a, a very important factor regardless of the style of music that you're playing. Mm -hmm.